Hi, Jack. Hello, Sarah. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> so I just thought we'd get together to have a chat about um, sort of common things that I'm seeing come through at the moment on the emails and a lot of things that I think I'm seeing are people that are getting maybe more and more running problems. <clears throat> I think a lot of people might be running a bit more for their um, daily exercise. Um, yeah. And I've had a few emails with people saying about, you know, what do I do for my IT band? I think I've got piriformis syndrome because I've looked it up, I'm getting a bit of back pain, I'm getting knee pain that I haven't had before. Um, so I thought what would be quite useful to try is to maybe need people I think there's a lot of obviously um, information out there on the internet that people are probably looking up injuries and maybe not wanting to bother the doctor or people like that. So I kind of think if we maybe went through some of the things that we know, so some of the things that we know work, some of the common causes of some of these problems, if people have started running and they haven't maybe run before or, or they may yeah. be upping their distances. So yeah, so I thought maybe it'd be quite good just to do a bit of a a question and answer thing or just see how this goes to see if it's actually useful for people really um, and yeah. so i think um obviously in the main i'd say most people are probably running about 5k at the moment i don't i think the people that are obviously used to doing a bit more um yeah. what with the marathon being cancelled <laughs> this weekend yeah. um i don't yeah, think no. people are going out for long runs so i think it's those no. shorter runs and maybe people are up in their speed or something so um, yeah, it's like a lot of challenges and stuff at the moment, isn't there? So I guess a lot of yeah. people are doing those and, and sort of, yeah. So kind yeah. of in, in your experience, what, what would you say are the most common things that you see from runners and runners that we treat? I think like, if you think like about three different factors, then you've got like, most injuries are going to be in running, in, in running are going to be caused by like decrease in a strength in a certain area most of the time you've got like biomechanical factors where you're looking at how the different parts of the body are moving when someone's running um like just general anatomical issues like um i don't know so if someone's got like flat feet are they going to be more prone to certain running injuries um obviously then you've got general running training issues where people are training either too quickly and increasing their load too fast sorry, not increasing their load, increasing their distance too fast or going too fast and then that's creating too much load in a certain area and that's creating pain. So like the most common areas for me would be like sort of obviously just knee, ankle and, and hip have the highest areas of pain. They're going to create, they're going to be most likely injured during running. You're going to get less upper body injuries unless you're looking at sort of a whole biomechanical issue going on if you're looking at specifically just from a load point of view then you're going to look at sort of like achilles pain maybe plantar fasciitis bottom of your foot pain um patellofemoral pain which is basically just knee pain um lower back pain obviously at the moment where you're decreasing your movement in your in your body in general potentially maybe you're doing more movement but most people are probably going to be sitting a little bit more or picking up their children more um, or trying different things like running, then their lower back's going to become quite vulnerable, especially if it's generally quite stiff anyway. So yeah, they're, they're probably the most common injuries or areas that, that get injured. Um, so what's the, um, what's the difference between the walking load versus the running load? Because obviously the ground force impact of running is very, very different to the walking yeah. load um so when you run your body absorbs 2.5 times your body weight so obviously the ground reaction forces are the forces coming from when your foot strikes the ground up into the joint so if if for instance well in theory if you did have more of a flat foot or a shoe that wasn't appropriate for you then you might find that you're going to get less absorption through the plantar fascia the bit that's meant to take a lot of our load um and a lot of that may go up into your knees or your lump or your lower back sorry um so if you're thinking if you calculate how much you weigh in kilograms and times that by 2.5 then you're going to get 
how much ground reaction force is going through your body when you run or estimate sort of number anyway well, i think i think also the the foot strikes very different isn't it so when you're walking yeah. you're you're actually planting your foot in a very different way to how yeah. you run so and i know some people will probably read stuff and say that a mid strike versus a four foot strike versus a heel strike so people might not even be working out what is the best way for them to run they might just be thinking well yeah. i've been told that a midfoot strike or barefoot running is better yeah so they might I mean, yeah go on, sorry. I was going to say people might be experimenting with do I get a free trainer do I yeah. get do I wear my Nike trainers that I always wear to do certain things because obviously all of those are going to have an impact on what force is going through their body yeah, I think there's not much according to the science there's no, there's no real hard evidence that there's much difference in injury rates between like a sort of a four foot runner and a and a mid foot runner I'm uh, sorry a four foot runner and a heel striker Strike. yeah so um obviously midfoot has slightly less injury rates but very minimal um so in terms of like foot striking i don't think there's massive difference obviously there is between walking and running but because you're increasing the amount of ground reaction force going through your body and and, and more load going through your body um in terms of footwear obviously i'm quite uh firm in my beliefs that footwear doesn't have much uh sort of that doesn't have much i don't know what the word is now sort of reaction on your on your body i don't your think footwear doesn't wear. massively matter you don't impact. think it doesn't massively impact your running yeah. sorry that's the word um so i think obviously all these things with like unless you've got some massive foot deformity i think if you're having stuff like put in your shoes or or buying a certain shoe for a specific pronation injury or something like that that's not going to have a massive impact there's no hard hard evidence that that changes much um obviously unless you have got some sort of major issue with your foot but even that you can work around via just exercising and and certain different styles of running and stuff like that so i think in terms of trainer i think like like you say like and like an, an Nike shoe or like an adidas shoe or whatever or all the other shoes you can get or barefoot running shoes really as long as you're training appropriately in terms of that you're putting in enough conditioning and that you're not doing too much too soon in terms of your distance for instance then you should find that the shoe that should not matter so the shoe should not make a difference to your style of running or I, your think that's, I think that's interesting right, because yeah. i think a lot of a lot of people that i've seen over the years I yeah. think the their footwear does make a difference, but I think that's potentially because all they're doing is potentially running. So they're not doing yeah. the conditioning stuff to correct the mechanical problems. Mm. So the footwear I think can make a difference if you've got a big toe that doesn't bend or you've got a yeah, exactly. fascia that's really stiff or really tight and you're wearing maybe a, a free a free trainer for that, then mm they would have to then do some of the, the rehabilitation work to actually get that plant fascia to respond a bit better. And I yeah. think you raised a good point there that if your training load is either too quick or it's too fast or your yeah. style of running and you're not giving yourself the time to adapt, then I think the trainer can make a difference to somebody that's maybe starting on that journey of running but between that first initial phase is that first initial zero to 5K or nine yeah. weeks or whatever it is. I think it could make a big difference between somebody giving up because of foot pain and fascial pain or Achilles pain to somebody yeah. maybe having a trainer that takes some of that shock or load or some of those corrections. Yeah, and I think <laughs> as long as people are understand, obviously when we're coming from it from like a an injury standpoint, then as long as people understand their shoes not going to take away your pain because as soon as you go from X shoe to another shoe, you're more than likely gonna either just be hiding the issue that's still there anyway. So as soon as you start ramping up your load, so like you say, like zero to five K, you could probably get away with doing very little strength and conditioning unless you have other massive issues going on or you're stiff in certain places or, or coming back from certain things. But I think once you start ramping past five K and and you're relying on a shoe, then you're gonna you're gonna run into massive issues in terms of I don't know, for instance, I don't know, knee, um, not knee problem. if you're talking about like plantar fascia or something like that, adding that 
sort of shock absorption is going to definitely help in that initial phase. But as soon as you start ramping up the mileage, then it's not going to, it's going to do little, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think we I think we tend to see quite a lot of the the major um, repetitive injuries over about yeah. I'd say over about six miles is probably when they really start to kick in. And I think, like you say, whatever footwear they're using at that point, if you're training above six k with a mechanical or biomechanical problem or a weakness, then I think it it doesn't like you say it doesn't matter what shoe you're wearing at that point. You you've got a yeah. problem. Um, so because I think that's a question we get asked a lot in kind of what trainers do I need and you know, do I need a, a pronation shoe or a cushion shoe? And I think for the, for the new runner, I think that can be quite important um, yeah. because I think it could make the difference between somebody giving up running. Yeah, that's true. I think, yeah, first. from like a psychological aspect, maybe. Yeah, yeah. definitely. definitely. So, so in terms of like common things that we see, I had an yeah. email uh, yesterday, for example, I think that was about um, getting kind of lateral knee pain. So they... Yeah have been foam rollering their IT band every day and kind of saying it doesn't seem to be helping, even though that kind of short term feeling of relief seems to be, I don't know, psychologically maybe helping. But I think yeah. as, as you and me both know, I think there's very little validity in foam rollering an IT band um, for reasons I'm sure we'll discuss in a minute. But yeah. again, you could actually be worsening a problem by doing that because over over foam rollering a, a structure that doesn't stretch potentially could make an inflammatory yeah. problem worse at, at either end. So um, I think, you know, where, where do you think IT bands come from in terms of, because, you know, we, if we explain what the IT band is, I think people might go and get a bit more of an understanding about why the IT band is not the problem area. It's probably either coming from below that or above yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, I think if we, if we explain what the IT band is, which I think, yeah. in my view, the it's a very, very thick, fibrous tendon. There's very little blood supply. It doesn't actually respond to stretch forces. Um, I think in the, in the research that was done recently, they were saying that you could hang a car off an IT band and it wouldn't actually stretch. So stretching, yeah. it's stretching your IT band is actually a misnomer anyway. Um, so where where does that issue come from? And I think if we look at the, the biology of it or the physiology of it, we know that the IT band is actually part of the kind of hip flexor, the glute structure. Um, so what would cause a problem with the IT band in, in your opinion that would then lead to that problem at the knee or potentially even at the hip or the lower back? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Like you say, like IT band rolling isn't going to, it's going to have limited effect on long-term solution for IT band pain. I guess you probably would get some relief because you probably create some sort of neurological sensation, I assume, at the sort of nerve nerve endings getting sort of sensitised might relieve some discomfort, but it's always going to come back because you're not addressing the actual problem. The IT band pain, or sorry, so IT band is just is the side of your upper thigh. Obviously, I'm not telling you that, Tim. <laughs> 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 Yeah, obviously, IT bands on the side of your leg. So then you're looking at potential pain at potentially at the hip, less likely at the hip, or the side of your knee, so the outside edge of your knee. That's more likely to occur if you're, again, like I feel like I'm going to say this quite a lot now, increasing your training or load quite rapidly. So if you are going from like a desk job where you've sat for the last sort of five years and have done limited exercise, and then you do get up and you, you, you try and do a you know a 5k without a structured program to load you up properly um, then you're more prone to getting something like an IT, pa IT band pain or a side of the knee pain or potentially side of the hip pain also if you're doing a lot of downhill running then you're more likely to um, get pain on the IT, ba IT band or outside of the knee or hip um, because you're putting again we're looking at them more control so a lot of running most running injuries that you see are more than likely coming from that sort of strength issue or a coordination issue most likely um so especially with it band pain if you're just predominantly at the moment focusing on rolling or doing some sort of release work maybe with a ball or a roller or just trying to stretch it then you're going to have limited to no effect on the pain or very very like small relief and then it'll come back the next time you run again 
because you're not focusing on addressing the problem, which in my my opinion, and most of the time, is going to come from the probably the hips, isn't it? In terms yeah. of, sort of having weakness in your glutes or your tummy muscles, maybe, or uh, you're over tight. Like we said, if you're if you're prone, if you're someone who's worked for a long time, uh, sorry, in a seated job for a long time, and then you get up go for a run you're probably going to be a bit tighter in the front of your hips so the front muscles in the front of your legs or in your tummy muscles are going to be a bit tight and that's going to then create other muscles to not work as hard as they could do and um, you might be you might have an old issue with a sort of a sprained ankle that you've rolled your ankle and that's then creating some sort of valgus issue in the knee or something like that or you're just therefore because your ankle's hitting the floor and then rolling a little bit rolling in or out a little bit they might be putting a lot of pressure on that tissue and then it's creating it to do something at the knee or the hip but yeah that's that's my opinion so I think really like inc rapid increase in training in terms of like training errors like a rapid increase in training or a lot of downhill training so if you're just trying to go fast and just going down loads of hills or adding a lot of downhill training into your running then you're more likely to suffer from outside of the knee pain or IT band pain I think people have got to remember like if you're waking up in the morning not necessarily now and well maybe now in lockdown but definitely before if you're doing more of a sedentary job where you're sitting a lot of the time if you're waking up most people wake up sit down have their cereal get into a car or a train still in seated get to work sit down for eight to nine hours get back in the car or the train still seated get home try and run their tissue hasn't been stretched or elongated all day so that tissue is going to be wound up and ready to probably hurt you in some way and then you then lay down with bed and start it all again <clears throat> i think that's i think that's quite an important point because i think you know a lot of like we talk about it band pain but the reality is people don't tend to get pain along their it band they either yeah, tend to get it at the side true. of the hip or they yeah. get it at the at the side of their knee um and I think a lot of people might also mistake what they think is IT band pain for thigh pain and tight thighs. And I think, like you say, if somebody is sitting down a lot during the day, your thigh muscles are going to be very short, they're going to be very tight. And then when you stand up, there isn't that elastic force. So yeah. then what potentially happens as you stand up is not only do the tight thighs pull on your pelvis and your lower back, potentially, yeah. I think if you then start running with very short, tight thighs, then what potentially then happens is that you become what we call a thigh runner or a lumbar spine runner. Yeah. Yeah. So you end up running using all the power in your quads, using all the power in your lower back, but yeah. you don't actually power through your bum muscles because those are the bits of you that have essentially got really lazy from sitting down a lot. Yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of runners probably can't understand why they get lower back pain and why their quads really ache after a run. And it's because they think the load isn't being it's not being shared throughout the entire system. So yeah. I think that's one of, the <clears throat> one of the big things that when people think they might be rolling their IT band and thinking they're getting a response from that, I think what a lot of people are essentially doing is maybe rolling their thigh muscles and creating yeah, that, um, yeah. that stretch response and maybe they're loosening their quads from sitting down all day and that might then give a positive response. Whereas I think rolling an IT band would actually, in my experience doesn't give you really any response at all no. um apart from a pain response that then it, you're just so happy that you're not in pain after you foam roll at it that yeah you, that i think it's better but it actually hasn't yeah. changed anything at all um so i think you know for the general um what i would call your general hobby runner who does sit down maybe at a desk maybe we're sitting down at chairs now that aren't suited for the jobs that we're doing at home um I think, I think people are potentially going to be stiffening up a lot more in their backs. I think they're going to be stiffening up a lot more in their thigh muscles. Yeah. And then, you know, you put that into an, into an upright structure and all the pull and all the load is ready to go in the lower back and the thighs. But actually the calf muscles have done nothing. The bum muscles yeah. have done nothing. And like you say, if there's an unknown ankle instability yeah. there, that's, um, yeah. then that's obviously going to have a ground force effect on the joints that, that you're kind of striking the ground with. So yeah. I think I think it's looking at what we can do to potentially help and advise those people rather than 
maybe kind of going, yep, yeah, I've got a lumbar spine problem, or you kind of go, well, actually, for those sorts of problems, I think in the main, what people should be potentially looking at is maybe stretching out the lower back, maybe stretching out the thighs, maybe rollering yeah. and trigger pointing those areas, but potentially not spending all your time trying to roll and trigger point all your bum muscles and your yeah. quads, but maybe start thinking about doing some balance training or doing some stability work for the ankle or maybe yeah. practicing, you know, standing on one leg without the foot roll. And, you know, for those th sorts of things, I think are going to go a lot further than just going on a foam roller four times a week after you run and, and hoping for the best, really. Because I think... Definitely. I think both, like, if, it, if, like, most of these, like, running injuries can be sorted out quite quickly if you do the appropriate rehab which is you know not anything massively crazy that's going to probably get you back to running again relatively fast without with limited pain or or no pain at all i think if if it's not going away after say doing it for a i don't know a month of just doing your conditioning and there's really zero to there's no, no change at all then that's when you could potentially be looking at more of a that's when you're looking at maybe your foot stuff or coordination stuff or stuff like that so i think usually i would say to people is like do the change in the training element of it so the decrease in the high load of the amount of runs you're doing if you run like every 5k a day you're new to running probably not gonna end well or changing you know going more into a flat surface or something like that then doing like what you're saying you know doing a bit more quad release lumbar spine release doing your strength and conditioning stuff for your hips maybe your calves as well if you've got if you've got time to do that as well and then if after say a month which would be quite a long time for that sort of injury um then working on sort of then going to see someone else about you know more in depth look at things but i think if you want to get it sorted quicker then look going to see someone or just speaking to someone um you're going to get more of a structured program and maybe identify issues like a weakness in the ankle or something like that as well. Might so if, if somebody was having some of these problems and it was maybe quite a minor problem, it was a, a twinge at maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes after running or they felt it when they got home the next day. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going to be worried about going to see somebody because the fear is we're going to tell them to stop running. And, yeah. and I think, for certainly at the moment, I think maybe for a lot of people, this 20 minutes that they're going outside every day is actually quite an important part of their day. Yeah. So if people were suffering with these niggles, obviously if it's a severe problem, that's a, that's a different yeah. issue. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I think if people were getting a little bit of a niggle, would you potentially tell them to stop running or would you just say, look, well, maybe a day on and a day off approach with a bit of rehab in between means that you can still do your running but you just need to decrease your distance or you need to do yeah. your <clears throat> what would be your your advice if it was a minor niggle because i i think a lot of people would worry that you're just going to go you shouldn't be running at the moment do you know what i mean yeah definitely i think the yeah, obviously like emphasis on that it's a minor issue like when your pain's minus i think if your pain is around like two to three out of ten then most of the time that's acceptable to run through and it should cause limited issues um yeah most people i think come in with the concept concept that you're going to tell them to stop running because there's obviously pain involved sometimes that is the case if, if it's not going away or it, it might need rest if their training is massive but most of the time with most running injuries again depending on the severity of the injury you can probably run through it by altering your training slightly just altering yeah your training slightly um yeah so i think like you say decreasing the amount of runs or the distance that you're doing that's what you'd have to look at maybe writing down how many runs you're doing in a week and if you realize that sort of monday wednesday and thursday you're doing 5ks or one of them's like 7k or something like that then that's most likely going to be contributing to your pain most likely or if your distance is if you're getting pain at 6k then maybe come and dropping back to 5k seeing if the pain's there if it if it's is still there dropping back to down to 3k and then just gradually building that up over the week is what i would usually say to people depending again on the severity of things yeah and I, and I think that's the thing a lot of people might have a day on a day off but they might have two days where they do two runs together and it might be that that is the bit that's causing the problem um yeah. 
because if you're loading the same structures every day, then you might not get the, the recovery in between that the, that the yeah. structures need if they're overloaded. Um, I think <clears throat> I think also kind of like you say, reducing that load so you're not maybe going to 5k every day, like maybe one day do a faster run at maybe two and yeah. then a slower run at five. Um, what about people that potentially when they start running, they get the pain, but then after about 10 minutes, it tends to ease off. What yeah. would you say the reasons for that are versus something that then becomes an onset during the run and then potentially causes a problem yeah. either towards the end of the run or, or kind of the, the night of or the day after? I think obviously that can be a couple of different things, but I think if it's happening during the running, then there's probably more likely going to be that it's a strength issue or a coordination issue because it's happening as you're probably fatiguing. So if you're getting to that 5K and then you're, I don't know, something's happening and you're leaning forward more or something like that, or you're going a bit slower or you're trying to overstride or something, then something's probably then not working like it should and then that's creating the pain most of the time. If it's happening at the beginning, that could potentially either be due to sort of like sleep. We know like sleep has a massive issue. If you're not, if you haven't got enough sleep the day before, then you're going to be fatigued as soon as you run. Or if you're not warming up, obviously static warm, static stretching is not going to have massive benefits pre-run. But if you could potentially add in more of a dynamic stretching, there's loads of that sort of online, or obviously you can speak to someone about that. Or just adding in sort of a five minute walk before the run should then warm up the tissue enough to then hope, hopefully decrease that pain where it would usually be there at the beginning. Obviously, you're looking probably more at a tendon issue maybe there as well. But I think, I think, yeah, I think if you're stiff at the beginning of the run, then you're going to get a little bit as your as your muscles get warmer and everything starts to stretch yeah, and become yeah, a little bit more elastic. I think that's when the pain is going to is going to reduce but like you say if the pain is worsening on that run <clears throat> it's probably as your your strength issues means that you can't actually take on that load so therefore yeah, your exactly. tissues are starting to fail a little bit um so i think that's i think that's quite important for people to recognize that if you are maybe getting a problem for the first five ten minutes it's probably just because you've been sitting or you're yeah, stiff exactly. or your joints are stiff because like you say, you can't expect to sit down for eight hours a day and then just expect your body to be able to get up and do right, something right. different. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, just adding in that, like, <laughs> little walk or might may just be enough to do it or just adding in some dynamic movements sort of, again. Things like, like maybe, like, leg swings or... Yeah, leg like, swings, butt kicks, high knees, um, maybe a squat, maybe sort of calf raises, something like that, um, should be enough to to warm you up to then not be painful then when you run most of the time. But again, if it is still there, then you need to look at other issues as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think I think most, think... most of that in terms of like training and stuff is going to be the same for most of our areas of pain, isn't it really? Obviously yeah. if we're just thinking about IT band then, but most of that's going to probably be the same. That's going to cover most of what we're talking about really in terms yeah, I, of that sitting standard thing i think that potentially what what we're talking about here is that a lot of the running problems that we see are very common and yeah, they they yeah. tend to come more from the fact that the body's not just conditioned to do that movement so yeah. to do any movement well you've got to train it slowly and by um repetitive added load rather than just going straight out and expecting to run a 5k with you know in 30 minutes it's, it's not going to happen it's not going to work yeah. um i think, I, I, think oh, sorry. I was going to say but i think that, that the issues that we see with lower back ache knee pain piriformis problems glute problems i think they are quite similar and i think what we're kind of almost concluding to here is that if you actually adapted your training load very gradually, that a lot of those problems would actually probably not come to yeah. light. Um, I think it's where potentially people are following a six week zero to five K and they're, they're not listening to their body and thinking, well, maybe I should extend that week of week four and do that two or three times until that pain dissipates. Yeah. Um, rather than progressing on to the next week, even though they're in pain, 
So I yeah. think that's I think that's the message there that listen to your body. If you're getting pain, then your load needs to reduce or your frequency needs to reduce. Yeah, definitely. And potentially you might be worth seeking a little bit of advice, whether that be a dynamic warm up that you can find on the internet beforehand, or maybe looking at some things that release your lower back or your yeah. um, tight muscles. Um, and I think a lot of those common issues, it, that injury aside, and, and I think when we talk about injury, we're talking about maybe d damage to tissue. Whereas I think when you've got an injury, it's a lot of more of an obvious sensation, isn't it? I think if, yeah. you, if you know you've done something, you know you've done something. Whereas I think if you're getting these little niggles that tend to build up and build up, then they're the things that you can actually change by some very simple measures, basically. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's important, like, if you were uh, going to play, I don't know, playing even just playing sort of Sunday league football or, football or rugby or something like that, or especially if you're at sort of a more higher level, then most of your week is going to be spent training for that. And that training is going to then have the impact on the match. And that's the same with running. If you don't do the conditioning element of it, or sort of focus on your body a little bit, like sleep, make sure you get proper sleep in before a run, or just um, listen to your body a bit more, then when you get to the actual run, which is like the match, then you're most likely going to suffer an injury or not run to your optimal performance because you're, you haven't added in the bits that are so important, like training, for the run doesn't matter how long it is even if it, you only run 5k once a week yeah at least one conditioning session is going to really help reduce the risk of injury in that run. yeah definitely